and a huge blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are still breathing we are here and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep everybody choicely blessed so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all of you how how is everybody doing wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh alhamdulillah we are good alhamdulillah just now who has chai or tea with them <laughs> yes just finish that uh, dinner alhamdulillah just finish the dinner alhamdulillah rabbil alamin so this is the time we gather for our final sisters event of this year and uh, this is by the way fourth in number and um, and definitely a heart to heart discussion reflection and checking in with each other so anybody wants to start off with any thought on their mind uh, any any thing that they are feeling or i hope you can type in one if you are feeling happy and healthy and are feeling optimistic about times ahead inshallah any thought of the day hmm? so alhamdulillah while you are thinking um, you know what al abbas radiyallahu anhu rasulullah sallallahu uncle he came to the prophet sallallahu and he said ya rasulullah sallallahu teach me adra and rasulullah sallallahu said oh my uncle say allahumma inna nas'aluka allahumma inna as'aluka al-afiyah allah i ask you for afia and what is afia afia means to save me from any afflictions to be healthy and uh, to be in afia uh, we don't need to have enough like you know to have enough money to live uh, to have children who are protected uh, then that's in afia and if we are forgiven and not punished then that means that we are in afia and uh, it means that allah protect me from any pain and suffering and this includes dunya and akhira so uh, al abbas radiyallahu anhu he uh, thought about this for a while then he came back after a few days and said uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this dua seems a little short i want something big rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him that my dear uncle ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afia you cannot be given anything better than afia it is a simple dua uh, and i hope you can type one if we know this dua allahumma inna allahumma inni as'aluka al-afiyah and uh, it's it's sincerely it means what you say that allah i ask you to save me from any distress any grief any hardship any harm and please don't test me so all this is included in this dua so with that we ask allah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep all our wonderful wonderful households uh, in afia and keep everybody happy healthy and well inshallah so So, uh, again a very warm welcome to all of you for taking out time and joining us here alhamdulillah and uh, we make dua that you are feeling well if somebody is sick we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to recover them to the fullest and uh, without much ado would like to um, in, you know would like to ask uh, uh, dr sakila nasreen and sister zohra amin our special guests for today to share uh, health and happiness tips with us all Now, Dr. Shakila, she is a doctor and nutritionist, and Sister Zohra, I mean, she's also a nutritionist, and both are working as senior research interviewers uh, with the Emory University. And uh, today, inshallah, we look forward to hearing about uh, the Dream Initiative program that they are with. So, over to Sister Zohra, inshallah. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Sister Jabiria. Alaikum assalam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sister Zohra? I'm good, Alhamdulillah. Sorry for delay because my phone, internet browser is not working, so now it's fixing. So I can start now. Alhamdulillah. This was all this 2020, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can I uh, share my screen? I want to share my screen. Yes, you can share your screen, inshallah. जी <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry to everybody. Uh, sorry for delay because my internet was not working properly. So, uh, 
welcome to my our program in dream initiative so today sister javeria you um, uh, introduce us over there it is a very good night for 31st night and we are starting new year so health consideration for the new year we are talking about this one so the past year has affected daily health habit for many of us you know because we are reducing our activity level due to our sedentary lifestyle working from home less outside activities and social gathering and exercise and gym or clothes so you know the effect is how impact our uh, whole society and overall the world and also the dietary habit also the same way you know we are eating unhealthy food like you know we are ordering food and also fast food and quick cooking and versus balanced diet because sometimes we don't have <coughs> enough grocery and uh, for the corona and also we are thinking about we need to consume more food for the rainy days so that is the our changing of lot of dietary habits also and and also additional stress caused by our this year of our adversity that affect our mental health being also like we are losing lot of family members financial and health also <clears throat> all those three things you know mainly activity dietary dietary status and also the stress those are the cause of all those hypertension and diabetes if we are not handling proper way it keep on going this way it will be a very effect for our normal life so i start this new year yeah of why so let's see how we can change our healthy habit over the past year so go away and we need to start new regulation for everybody's life determination for activity level how we can change our life to act active increase our activity level and also the dietary habits also <clears throat> we need to focus on our especially our south asian our health healthy ha habit is not very healthy way so because we are sometimes consuming more fat thing and you know, sugary stuff especially you know when we are stressed doing nothing we make a chai right and with the shingara or something so actually we need we need to think about this how it is hel healthy way or not so also we need to focus on our you know all this improving our uh, mental health you know mindfulness sometimes you know lot of stress going on like when we are praying we need to focus our mind and body in the present situation right so same way when we are praying now lot of stress we cannot focus when you cooking when do something but our mental health is another other world so everybody is facing this kind of problem nowadays but they do to our situation so let's discuss some point how we face this one do you do have any suggestion so this situation you know when stress and all those thing how it affect our you know healthy habits so anybody can discuss your idea with us hello Yes, I was thinking. Uh, this is one thing I was even thinking today that one of my top duas that didn't, uh, you know, come through this year was re reducing weight, right? So uh, this past year, especially when we are not going out and we are at home, I think it's a lot of cooking and eating and you know sitting. So definitely have to adjust. Um, the the suggestion is to have to be moving. So be outside, be walking, walking a lot. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make it easy. Yeah, thank you, Sister Javeria. This is a very good uh, uh, answer from you. Yeah, because nowadays we are cooking. Main, our main pleasure and recreation is cooking. Most of the time we are spending time in a in a kitchen. I saw an article in Facebook. The South Asian we are spending to five to six hour in kitchen versus the other ethnicity they are spending twenty seven minutes. Okay, because now only one we are. doing pleasure with the cooking food and feeding family right make them happy so that that's why you are gaining weight and we are not pay do get any physical activity we need and people when you stress sometimes people go up a stress with the food you know they enjoy the food so inshallah we will help you with this program i think you will get lot of idea and resources here dr shakila will discuss it in later 
thank you for your concern and we are not alone because sometimes you know we are going to mosque because we have a community uni unity over there unite over there so when people are united unite so that that feedback is really good so our team we are working together we are sharing our idea our thoughts our resources our all the thing whatever we are gaining so that is a you know uh, uh, the like a bridge with the community with the imuri and over all you know the anyway for which you understand us this program so this way we can change our lifestyle because south asian we are three times more diabetic than other ethnicity that is our question why and what is the reason because our lifestyle our food habit our stress management and when we have a pressure diabetes we don't know how to manage this one technique so that that's why we are here today to you know empower each other and <clears throat> we know that we are in islam we know there is a five pillar of islam if all pillar is strong then our and then our iman is, is it will be more stronger so that's why as a good muslim practicing muslim we are always trying our best to strong our pillar right if one pillar is weak maybe other pillar will get less strength right so same way the five pillar of wellness there is a nutrition physical activity mental well being and rest and relax <clears throat> and also so this movement healthy eating and rest and recovery mental health well being all we need some knowledge and right action because we have knowledge we cannot do with the action so i just always tell my kids look if we have a sharp knife at home we are not using this one so what is the point of having sharp knife same way everywhere when you practice islam or any religion or anything or your study or your well being or anything we need to use our knowledge and as well as we need to do the right action action is the more uh, powerful tools for our all aspects thank you this is my presentation and i'm handing over this presentation to dr shakila thank you jazakallah khair <coughs> assalamu alaikum thank you uh, johra pa and thank you uh, sister jaberia to allow us uh, to talk about our pro uh, project so i'm sharing uh, the screen test uh, okay so do you do you see my just a minute do you see my not right now this is okay like huh? yeah yeah do you see now right okay uh so okay so um assalamu alaikum again thank you so emory is actually working to assist you everything is just hard from sister johra we have the dream atlanta project under the guidance of emory nyu and asha so, dream memory actually i i want to uh, mention something about dream dream uh, stands for diabetes research education and action for minorities so we fall uh, fall in that category because we are the minorities here and the dream initiative is we health education program led by emory school of medicine it uh, it was started uh, at ny uh, u Uh, but it is still ongoing there but now also in atlanta and remory main focus is uh, diabetes control and diabetes related health complication and hypertension management through uh, healthy lifestyle choice and uh, there are some supplemental resources with culturally tailored health inf information so uh, we can do work together all the way to achieve our reasonable goal by making gradual changes and healthy choices it, it is safe and uh, achievable inshallah uh, and also it is 100% free no cost to you at all and lots of fun including uh, cooking sessions exercise sessions uh, especially sometimes we do 
for our uh, sisters also some exercise we can show you uh, so that you can do it inside home who doesn't go outside so th those are also you know uh, some fun activities and healthy uh, healthy choice and there are also one on one support uh, through phone and video call to help you achieve your health goal uh, and understand your needs so is it right for you if you want to control your blood pressure and you want to manage your diabetes and you want to learn uh, to be healthier and uh, your south asian community then it's for you so uh, our focus is not using too much medication uh, uh, but you know the awareness this is we have to uh, make awareness that uh, we can have healthier life with healthy food and diet uh, food and exercise so uh, then it's right for you <laughs> so uh, during the co uh, during uh, this covid how dream works since pandemic it, uh, is actually uh, in one way i will say that uh, that is one reason we can attend from home because it was uh, it is started that we have to go there and do this but since pandemic no transportation is needed you don't need to go there uh, you can do like you know over video conferencing or virtual presentation and those uh, group fitness session all those stuff so uh, it's a comprehensive program using online tools and uh, uh, before finishing i'm just uh, let you know uh, in uh, our beside me and J sister johora there are two other lady who works uh, behind us dr megasha she is uh, the site pi for emory and uh, christina gives uh, she is our coordinator so we all are here to help inshallah call us for more information i have uh, sent our website information to the chat box and also i will send uh, i will uh, post our number so that anyone is interested uh, please join and thank you again jazakallahu khairan and wish you all the best uh, may allah bless you uh, and happy new year thank you thank you sister yeah. Uh, anybody has any questions they want to ask right now? Yeah, yeah, they can ask yes. any, any. Yes, we will take probably a few minutes. If anybody has any questions for Dr. Sakila or Sister Zora, anything that's on your mind right now. I personally particularly was thinking one question, like typically how much time a person has to spend with this dream program? Uh, is actually sister once a month uh, our session for one hour mm -hmm. and also in the meantime we will have some uh, like you know in between like um, between session we have some progress uh, like you know goal setting so we will call once or twice a month and 10 15 minutes and set up some goal and then we will uh, we'll follow up with that how you you guys are doing this thing so uh, maybe uh, twice a month we will have contact and once a month uh, one session per month mm -hmm. is one hour only but i think um if i'm not mistaken if those who are uh, planning on joining the program they will need to share some information uh, like their first name last name some blood glucose cool yeah cool yeah their first name last name date of birth address those thing yes mm -hmm. but no social security or anything mm -hmm. but no insurance Alhamdulillah, we have a question here uh, from Sister Fatima. Is the, uh, Sister Fatima, you can always unmute and you can ask as well if you like. Uh, I, I, I saw the question from, from Sister Fatima mm -hmm. that keto diet uh, actually um, is, a, is a very like, you know, million dollar question now because it's ongoing everywhere and we don't suggest that thing. Because we suggest a balanced diet, not keto diet. Like, you know, we'll show a healthy plate, like that plate will be like uh, one fourth of, um, uh, half of the plate should be like fruits and vegetable. One fourth will be protein and one fourth will be uh, 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 carb. That's it. That, that, that for method we follow, but 
there are some side effects of following this keto and uh, you know sometimes those uh, health issues uh, we heard about that so we don't follow that thing mm -hmm. and especially sister jabiria uh, sorry nasri i'm interrupting you uh, keto diet you know actually people uh, who have have the kidney disease fatty liver other you know the uric acid or gout so first we need the first any everybody's uh, physical uh, you know physical uh, report and then they can eat more protein like but lean protein not all the fatty protein or which way we cook our meat right she steam baking or bake uh, or you know shivering you know the, that kind of meat is fine but the way we are cooking you know especially you saw the mosque when we are serving this dinner for iftar mm -hmm. so that food is you know it is completely forbidden i think for our <laughs> our age you know mm -hmm. so the, and uh, also in, in our bangladesh one doctor is a dr jahangir kobis everybody is following now in bangladesh my friend all the nutritionists they says every hospital every, every health profession they are getting lot of ketosis problem and kidney yeah. failure and all those thing because due to keto keto even keto is you know dr atkin he invented that one and he passed away because he was doing this one so i i i personally don't suggest keto is good diet because we need some complex carb you know Jazak so that is the big Jazakallah mm, khair. That definitely is very helpful and insightful there. So that's that's the whole point that we come together and we discuss. Uh, that definitely helps. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we need the support system in which we can probably go for our goals. So Jazakallah khair, Asma Jazak for sharing all that information and uh, definitely the contact numbers are there. Please reach out. Uh, let's make it a healthier year going forward. And uh, right now, as we are sitting and we are hearing all the fireworks going around us, how many of us are hearing fireworks? By the way. Deadline is the twenty fifth January to making an ID, creating ID hmm. and intake. Exactly. And then our program start from February. So if anybody is interested, they can join. They can share their and it number has to be and all. Done before twenty first, twenty first January, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Even the ID, we have to be our uh, collect earlier. We have to create those are earlier because uh, there will be randomization because uh, uh, you know a study has like two part. Maybe one is uh, one will go for intervention, another will go for control group. That's why they will do uh, um, like randomization, hmm. computer randomization. So that will be in Jan last January. I think January thirty uh, first they will do that thing. So before that. And also, we have to like you know collect some health information mm -hmm. uh, to like uh, to make a goal or set up to know about you how what is your uh, uh, food habit, what do we eat regular basis, like you know survey kind of, right. so that you will know health information. So, so there, uh, uh, if someone wants to join, I think the first week uh, to, within like 15th will be the best time right so maybe when? and of course like you know the sooner the better i think uh, those who oh, yeah. now yeah. the question there is uh, the sister mina was asking was how much it costs and i gave the answer that it's no. free but free. why is emery offering this program for free for the community yeah it's is the federal uh, federal program mm -hmm. so it's not like emory fund um, but emory has you know for research lot of mm -hmm. uh, billion of dollars they are spending for research that doing but nowadays they are thinking like you know to not to use too much medication mm. that's why right for if you use medication and health complication mm. and then expenses is a lot of ultimately this is not like a money money if you if your money is ultimately the like you know this government money is your money right, right. So if you spend too much money, uh, so government will not get money that that way, right? You know. So yeah, it's and also, program. so it's yeah. not. That, that's true. yeah, and also you know, suppose who have a diabetes and hypertension, it ultimately they are losing their main organ, right? right. When people are severely uh, diabetic and uh, uncontrolled diabetes, so eventually they are uh, getting the get the kidney failure, right. eye problem. And the yeah, gangrene, right? And so they are. Federal government picks up 
stop before going that worse you know right. because in time kidney dialysis more than one uh, you know 100000 100000 or more right but if they are control with this or lifestyle changing all those healthy habits then they can stop and they can get mm-hmm. healthier life sure. that is the main reason federal government is interest we need to reduce our health cost Mm-hmm. yeah that is important like you know now everybody is focusing <laughs> focusing on preventive care mm-hmm. yeah right? so uh, pre- there, yeah no thank you so much i think that was really enlightening and definitely i think i urge myself and all of us to explore this and definitely at the end of the day it's all about uh, setting the priorities so it's always yes. a good idea to look at our priorities and today as we uh, you know obviously from the gregorian calendar we're going to enter 2021 so we have with us sister faiza alhamdulillah so to help us uh, give that motivation to reorganize uh, recognize and then you know how we prioritize our lives inshallah so jazakum allah khair once again dr sakila and sister zohra and uh, sister faiza yeah. over to sister faiza inshallah Jazakum Allah khairan kathira kathira for organizing this program and it was a very informative session definitely we have so many free programs from the government we just don't use make the best use out of it so i would really uh, be grateful to sister zohra and sister sakila for coming and sharing the knowledge with us alhamdulillah rabbil alamin and now since we all know today is what today is december 31st the night that everybody celebrates we are so uh, consumed in this that we don't we don't realize it what this night supposed to be and where the celebration come from so let's see the islamic perspective what are we supposed to do as a muslim in this night <clears throat> and of course we can organize ourselves in such a way that we can recognize and um if you can go back to the slide one more time uh and reorganize and reconnect yourself and now in the next slide what we see right now is know the history of the new years some 4000 years ago in babylonian area they came up with a celebration and this celebration was uh, replaced by the religious celebration so before we do anything we need to ask this question what should muslim be doing as a muslim what priorities should we have should we copy and follow the crowd whatever they do we should be doing that too because we learn from the hadith of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam that be different from them in everything even in your attire even if you're fasting if they fast one fast of uh voluntary then we have to fast too fast right so we need to understand that we need to be a thinker always think before doing anything another question comes in mind is that gregorian calendar versus the lunar calendar some people have this in mindset you know what no 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 we're not going to celebrate the gregorian calendar but we're okay to celebrate the lunar calendar so the answer to that question is yes both calendars are made by allah subhanahu wa taala is it is allah subhanahu wa taala who created the solar system it is allah subhanahu wa taala who created the lunar system as well so there is no difference between it but yes of course lunar calendar holds more precedence because of the calendar that we need to follow islamically for example fasting for example ita for example the waiting period after the periods uh, for the divorce and everything yes but uh, following the lunar calendar and the gregorian calendar it's perfectly okay and now if we go to the next slide we see uh, uh that the dua for islamic new year now why did i say islamic new year because gregorian calendar and the uh, lunar calendar both are islamic so let's say the dua i would like to everybody to say this dua right now because the new year is about to start in few hours right allahumma adkhilhu alaina bil amni wal imani والسلامتي والإسلامي ورضواني من الرحمن وجواري من الشيطان Oh Allah, enter it upon us with safety and health, safety and faith, with peace and Islam and with the consent to the compassionate and the protection from the evil. And if you go to the next slide, after making the dua, what else are we supposed to be doing with our time? Number one thing we need, uh, we need to understand is 
Enter with a grateful heart. Anything new that comes in your life, whether it's a new spouse, new child, new home, new whatever, it is a blessing of Allah SWT. So if Allah SWT is letting you enter a new home, a new house, or a new school year, or the new calendar year, what should we do be doing? Be humble. Allah SWT says in Surah Al-Baqarah to uh, Bani Israel, when you enter, say hittatun, and be humble. So let's humble ourselves down in front of Allah SWT. And of course, you should be counting your blessings. Do you know why? Because if you don't count your blessings, then uh, people tend to forget. So I would really recommend each one of you, take time out before going to bed tonight. Write a journal. And think of the stuff that you have done so, uh, this year so that you know where do we stand. Because most of the time, people live day in and day out. And you know what they say? They say, oh, it's the end of the year when we don't even know, right? So don't stress over it. Just relax and really move forward with a positive mindset. Write down as many blessings as you can think of. You know why? Because if we don't think of the blessings, we take them for the granted. So I would really suggest to take time out and just learn and listen, right? And listen to your heart, what your heart says. Then think of all the shortcomings and say astaghfirullah for that. Of course, the next thing you can do is think of the time that was spent. How? What, what time do you spend and how do you spend? Because you know why? If we don't pay attention to these details, guess what happens? If we enter the new year and another year passed by and we say, oh my Allah, I cannot believe the new year is gone. The year 2020 just started. And the last thing I wanted to bring up to our attention is that when last year, 2020, was about to begin, people celebrated, people shouted, people did uh, all kinds of music, and they threw party, right? Did they ever knew that this new year is bringing COVID virus with it? No. So a lot of people suffered throughout the 2020. So if we do the same and we celebrate just like they do, we need to think about it again. What about uh, the future? Do we have the future information? Do we know? We don't know, right? So why not? Why do something that uh, was not done by Allah Subhanahu wa messenger and his companions? So come back to the reality. Pre prepare your life. Prepare your mind to enter this new year with a new great beginning. And how do you do that? Think of yourself that if you were in the same place as you were in the past, or if you want to move forward and be closer to Allah Subhanahu wa how do you do that? Number one. Always, always realize it. Number two, write it down. Set some goals for you. Give clarity your, to your mind. Do you know why? Because if you're confused and if you have no plan, then you're going to stay where you are. You know, it's like a, <clears throat> when you do driving and if you go circle, 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 round and round, you will not get anywhere. So I'm going to end my session with the beautiful saying of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that is, remember your death, because every year pass by, we all get closer to our death, whether we like it or not. We can stay healthy as all the, both Sister Zahra and Sister Sakira told us, because our body has our rights too, our mind has our rights too, and our spirituality deserves good food too, just like your body does. So with that mindset, Let's plan and really think about writing your goals for the year 2021. How much closer do you want to get to Allah SWT? How much Quran do you want to memorize? And what difference do you want to make? So once we leave this world, where do we go, right? So uh, fail to plan is plan to fail. True, right? So <clears throat> inshallah, plan in such a way that you can really keep it. Now, with that, uh, inshallah, I'm going to end my session. I hope it was uh, in, uh, something that we get some benefit from it. And subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khair wa asanu jaza. That was beautiful. Allah SWT make us thankful. And it's such a huge blessing to be sitting in the gathering of uh, Mashallah the Learned. And as we do enter this year, you know, Allah SWT enable us to do what is right. Like by, by Allah help us enable us see right and then help us do it right way. So Alhamdulillah, if anybody has any sharing, anybody would like to share, most welcome. Um, and uh, I'm honored that Sister Maryam is also here, not feeling too well. Sister Maryam, how is the backache we all make dua you 
get better very soon, inshallah. But Jazakum Allah Khair for being here and sharing some reflections on 2020 for with us. Sure. Or, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah Khair for yeah. giving me the opportunity. And uh, it's getting a little better, but yeah, it's very hard to sit in one spot. So I might be saying ouch, ouch sometime, but just prepare with me. Um, but inshallah. Uh, but what I really like is today I was feeling that, you know, I didn't do anything. And I get your message and I say, subhanAllah, Allah help me to make the most of today, at least something that I can share. I'm sure most of us um, have much more to share and I would like to listen from or hear from you. So I just wanted to share some reminders, some lessons that I learned through this 2020 and there are many more, but I, with the, with the amount of time that I have, I'll try to share some. And I know uh, you guys will agree with me as well as, um, you know, you will have much more to share. So please do. So as we are, you know, going and wrapping up this year, what do we need to do? I always do it every year. I try to realize what have I learned this year. So this year, the first and the foremost thing that I've learned, not that I didn't know it before, not that I was doubtful of that, but the first thing that I really realized, and all of us probably have, our helplessness and Allah's supreme power. I, I, I mean, you can write one if you can really vouch for that. Really, this was the one first lesson that how, how we are helpless, how Allah is the supreme, the great Right, that Al Azim, the Al Ali, and with that, I want to share this dua that most of us probably know um, from after Salah that we recite, and this dua fits this lesson so perfectly. Is Allahumma la ma'ghiya lima a'taita, wa la mu'tiya lima manata, wa la yanfa'u zal jaddi milkan jadd. It means that, oh Allah, what you give. Nobody can take from me what you give. Nobody can take from me and what you don't want to give. Nobody can give me and literally no one has power. Nobody can overcome your power. Like whatever you want to do, you plan. So subhanAllah, this dua, literally every day I would feel that this is so much true. We want to do so many things. We do. We had so many plans. So literally, I say that the lesson was our whole life, our every breath depends on this one kun by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, I felt it, and I'm sure most of us, you know, how we had planned, like Sister Faisal said, how we plan every year, you know, all these things. This is what I feel like this year has taught me. And the second and another most important lesson for me, for myself, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you guys can also say probably yes, is we plan and Allah plans. But sure, he is the best of planner. And with that, I really want to share this ayah. And I try to remember this ayah whenever I'm feeling... Um, uh, unpleasant to say the least or, uh, uh, you know, just really worried about something or sad about something or unhappy about something. And we all know that And perhaps you dislike a thing and it is good for you. And perhaps there's something that you love. Hope is something that you really want. You you yearn for it, but it's bad for you. And this ayah fits perfectly with this year. I, I really want to say this. Yes, we like to go out. We like to meet people. I'm a people's person. I like to be with people, you know, hug, you know, and meet. But this year, Allah taught me something different. He wanted to preserve me for him only. This is what I learned, that he wanted to save me from all this commotion, all this life, happiness, busyness of the world. And he wanted to say, sit on the prayer mat and talk to me. Come back to me. I learned that Allah wanted to save, my, uh, save me for himself only. So be happy that Allah gave us that time, gave us that chance uh, to be with him. Why? Because he wanted us to love him the way we should. How Allah says in the Quran, amanu So ask yourself, did I learn these lessons? Did I become close to Allah? Because Allah wanted me to be close to him. That's why he gave us all this uh, life away from the world, away from everybody. Even families were torn apart, right? Some people, you know, you couldn't meet your parents, your siblings for months. And this is what Allah told me, to you need me and and. Even though he doesn't need me, but we need him. But he still said, come to me. So this is a few of the lessons. And one other thing that I really want to end with is, is I really have become so grateful what already I already have. Take, take each day, literally each day as a blessing on its own. Every day, take it as day at a time. Why? Because what happens is when we look at months and years, things, we forget to take each day as a blessing. Think of each day as a blessing. 
And for that, I want to share the ayah. A uh, part of the ayah is la in shakar tum la azid an nakum, wa la in kafar tum inna azabi la shadid. I literally have part of things that I was never grateful for. Now I think that I really uh, am grateful for those things. So I have learned and, and many more, but just a few of those that this is what Allah has taught me to stay positive in in. No matter what the situation is, I've lost so many close family members. Two of my uncles have passed within the eight day span, and wallahi, I, I can tell you how even with that, I learned to be positive. I've learned to recoup and and make the most of that also. Why? Because Allah says, "Alladina ida asabatu musiba qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajim." So these are just a few lessons um, that I want to share with you, and there are many more. And sorry, I always say one, but I want to have to, I have to say one last before I let you all go. Is Allah really wanted for you and me to um, purify our deeds, our intentions? You know why? Because a lot of times we do all these good deeds, all these uh, acts in front of people, and people see that and say, "MashaAllah, she's doing that, she's doing that." This year, most of our deeds were only known to us and Allah. I really thought about that. So when am I doing a deed? I really renew and purify my intention. So this is what I really wanted to all, and I hope you can share some lessons that you will have learned, and I'm sure they will all be helpful. But I really hope that was some kind of benefit that, that we need to take each year and learn lessons and then take them for the next year. Not just say, you know, close your diaries and that's it. 2020 is gone, so I can just close my diary and that's it. We really want to take those lessons and bring them next year as well and apply them and keep renewing them, inshallah. And Jazakallah Khair, Sister Javeya, for giving me the opportunity, for putting my two cents in this program. May Allah accept for all that you do, all that everybody did, Sister Zora, Sister Shakila, Jazakallah Khair, for all the beautiful session. And may Allah make us of those who really love each other for the sake of Allah. So I love all of you for the sake of Allah, purely and solely for the sake of Allah. And Jazakallah Khair. Ma'iyaki, Jazakallah Khair, wa asal jazam, may Allah loves you and all for whose sake we love each other. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, with the mercy of blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can look back at this year and definitely Allah knows what is the best for us and when it's the best for us. So all those who are grieving loss of life in their families, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant them the highest level of Jannatul Firdaus and inshallah reunite with uh, the families in the highest level of Jannah. Inshallah, just a quick announcement that we will have the tafsir starting shortly here in this same room so those who would like to uh, stay inshallah we have our uh, daily tafsir that happens at 8 15 uh, but before we depart uh, the chat box is open your mics uh, are open please go ahead anybody wants to say anything um, uh, anything that you uh, took away or anything you want to say uh, feel free um, on the uh, behalf of all here, we just want to remind you that you are beautiful, you are part of the du'as, and um, till the time we are able to meet in person back in the masjid and able to see each other smiles and hug each other tight, uh, it's been absolutely an honor uh, to be uh, united, uh, alhamdulillah, on the digital medium. So keep each other in your precious du'as, and uh, once again, anybody uh, wants to continue on this journey for... Um, the health benefits with Emory uh, Medicine, then Dr. Sakila and Sister Zora will be a click away. Uh, just, uh, Dr. Sakila, if you can share the numbers once again uh, on, on, the ta on the chat, that'd be great for anybody who is joining right now. Uh, but Jazak mm -hmm. khair once again, unless anybody has anything to say, please go ahead. Is, Dr. Sakila, you want to say something? No, I'm sharing. Thank you. Jazak khair. Uh, I'm sharing my number. Right. Uh, and uh, Jahura's number, and I would uh, re I really appreciate that you have given us the, uh, the chances to talk to, like actually, uh, like so that we can pre we could present our um, information. Jazakallahu uh, khairan, and hope to see you soon, inshallah. And stay safe and healthy. May Allah keep all of you healthy and safe. Amen. Thank you. Jazakallahu khairan. Sister Fatima, you wanted to say something? Yes, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you, all of the most wonderful and kind sisters. I've been very blessed to meet most of you. And so I just wanted to say thank you and alhamdulillah for all of your kindness um, and, and, and um, with my shahada this year and, um, and just your warm embrace. 
It really has meant so much to me to have the community um, to be able to attend the classes with Sister Halla and with Sister Dalia and to meet all of the uh, the rest of the sisters as well. So again, just wanted to say thank you. I'll send you a big kiss and I wish you all the very best in the new year. And um, and I look forward to hopefully seeing uh, each other in person and spending some time together as well. So thank you so much. Alhamdulillah. And inshallah, we'll see each other soon. Yeah. Inshallah, that that warmed me up all from inside. Alhamdulillah, we can you know start off with a very good note. Alhamdulillah, and uh, my smile is all grinned to me. And I think Sister Sora don't get sentimental, right? It's time to be happy. Inshallah, and we will uh, end up with this dua that Allah protect us uh, from decline of His bounties. Allah in in we ask for all of us. Allah in the now to become in zawali ni'matik wa tahwuli afiyatik wa fujaati nifmatik wa jamii safatik. Oh Allah, I you seek refuge in you from a decline in your bounties a change of state of well-being a sudden onset of your punishment and from all of your wrath so Allah subhanahu wa keep all the families in there in his in his infinite mercy and afia Jazakumullah uh, khair once again for being here subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadun la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk wa lasra inna l-insana lafi khus illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqi wa tawasaw bil sabr inshallah we'll meet with our sisters meeting in 2021 inshallah and